shut up, right? I hope you get raped. I will literally beat your fucking head in, bitch. That's the best fucking to euthanize. This ends in three, two, one. Welcome everyone, we're here at Ignite Gaming Lounge. I'm Natalie Casanova, also known as Zombie Unicorn. I'm a Twitch streamer and longtime gamer, having worked in the industry for over six years. I'm really excited to be here today for the first ever Bully Hunters Live. This, this issue is a serious one and it's really near and dear to my heart. Making gaming a more safe and special place for everyone, a more welcoming place for all. So. If you're watching this, you probably already know what's going on. You've probably seen our videos all over the internet, or maybe you've experienced this yourself, sexual harassment in gaming. Over 21 million female gamers have experienced harassment, sex taunts, or threats in game. Millions of gamers, female gamers, and gamers alike, have experienced trying to hide their gender online to just avoid targeted harassment. And 36% of female gamers have literally stopped playing a game or stopped playing games altogether because of this. This ends now. You can find all the sources for these statistics on bullyhunters.org. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you what we're doing today and who's involved. Basically, we're introducing a new tool that's gonna be available globally to help in -game, end in-game harassment by connecting victims of in-game harassment with skilled gamers who wanna help in real time. Over here, we have our casual gamers. These gamers represent you and I. They're just doing what they love to do. They're right now playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive, otherwise known as CSGO. They're playing in various game servers all across the internet. And now, over here, we have some completely different gamers, not connected into the, ga the casual gamers whatsoever in any way. These are the bully hunters. They're pro elite gamers who would like to use their skills in gaming to help in-game harassment and in-game harassment and make it a more respectable, welcoming place for everyone. So, how does this all work? First, let me introduce you to my co-host, our co-host, Tian Tran. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Tian Tran. I too love gaming, but I am not involved in the gaming industry in any way. I represent the everyday casual gamer, and I'm going to help make some of today's show a little easier to understand for the non-gaming viewer. Here's a top-level explanation for what may happen. While our casual gamers are playing, they may experience harassment. When that happens, we'll be alerted. They'll also call on a bully hunter. A bully hunter will jump into their game and take on harassment head on. They'll hunt down, the, and they'll hunt down and take out the perpetrator. You heard that correctly. Bully hunters will get these harassers where it hurts them the most, by beating bullies at their own game. Will it happen tonight while you are watching? We don't know, but odds are yes since it's already happened several times in the past four hours. That's right. We've been here for the past four hours recording everything. Let's show you something that happened a little bit earlier today. Okay, uh, control room, can you bring up that footage, please, and hit play? Okay, we are looking at the play from our casual gamer, the Rose Thorpe. Let's watch what happens. Take a look. You don't know how to play the fucking game properly. All that you still suck. I guess girls just suck at video games in jail, stupid whore. This is a type of harassment that over 21 million female gamers have experienced. It was at this moment when we saw that it was not just trash talking. It was straight up harassment. So that's when the Rose Thorn, our casual gamer, decided to call on one of our bully hunters. What the Rose Thorn did in this case was use our new tool on her mobile device. We'll show you later how our tool works. But let's see what happens now. So the bully hunter has now been alerted and should be joining the game soon. Okay, pause right there. Now zoom in to the bottom left corner. It says our Bully Hunter has just entered the game. See, Bully Hunter 77 has joined the game. Now our victim, the Rose Thorn, and our Bully Hunter can communicate with one another. Let's take a look at how that plays out. Now let's zoom out and roll the footage, please. And there it is. Pause right there again, please. 
Now, our bully hunter has asked the Rose Thorn live in game who is harassing her. And our victim then immediately replied. Let's zoom in again on the bottom left hand corner. Now, you see there, the tool connected these two a victim with a bully hunter. Okay, so now Bully Hunter 77 knows the name of the harasser and she is ready to take action. Now we are going to switch over to Bully Hunter 77 screen to watch the hunt. Cut to that feed, please, and play it. So we are watching our Bully Hunter. She knows who the harasser is and she is on the hunt. You can still hear the harassment in the background. It doesn't stop. So now Bully Hunter 77 is looking for the harasser. And it looks like she's going to use her knife folks. And there it is, just pause right there. Let's back up and see that again. A brilliant knife move, very difficult. And look right there, see in the lower left hand corner, let's pause that and zoom into that. Our bully hunter left the calling card message to the harasser. Harassment is not a game, bullyhunters.org. Now that's what this is all about, removing harassment from gaming. Harassment has no place here. So as you witnessed in this situation from this morning, our casual gamer, the Rose Thorn, used the Bully Hunter tool to call on a bully hunter. And you can find the tool at bullyhunters.org. And again, it's a tool available to everyone around the globe that we provide as a group of pro gamers. Steel Series, Vertigear, Now, Cyberpower PC, and Diverse Gaming Coalition, to name just a few. This tool connects victims of harassment with highly skilled gamers in real time, whether you're male or female. We are looking for people who want to fight against injustice and, injustice and harassment. Now let's take a look at the website right now and explain exactly how it works. Load the website, please. Now, as you can see on bullyhunters.org, you can call a bully hunter or become a bully hunter. The Rose Thorn, our casual gamer in the hunt you just witnessed, used the mobile version of this website and tapped call a bully hunter. Now let's use a situation between the Rose Thorn and Bully Hunter 77 to explain to everyone how the tool works. Now let's see that. So what the Rose Thorn had done was gone to our website and select call a bully hunter. As you can see, there is an army of bully hunters who have unique names and ratings. She then logged on through her Steam account. And we'll switch to that right now. And once she was done, it took her to a screen where she could select locate a hunter. She was then matched with Bully Hunter 77, who added her on Steam. You see, it says Bully Hunter 77 will send you a friend invite. This screen then reminded her to invite the Bully Hunter to the game. And after the hunt, she could add a rating based on her experience, because along with becoming a bully hunter comes the responsibility of acting appropriately. And that's what this does. It makes sure that this powerful tool is used for the right reasons. Now, if you are a victim of in-game harassment, and we know there are millions of you out there, there is a solution now. Don't stop gaming. Don't stop doing what you love. Don't stop playing. Act. Raise your hand. Use our tool. Please, we are here to help. So now let's, screw through, let's go through how Bully Hunter 77 used our tool to become a bully hunter and help the Rose Thorn. And this is for all of you watching, all the gamers with some skill, all of you that think harassment is not okay, just as we think it's not okay. Here is what you can do. Yeah. Now let's see that. So what Bully Hunter 77 did was click become a bully hunter. Then she logged in with her Steam account the Bully Hunters tool will qualify you according to your kill ratio, hours played, and reports within CSGO. But don't think this means you need to be a pro. If you game, whether you are pro or casual, male or female, there's a place for you. So if you qualify, you will be asked to accept the Bully Hunters code of conduct, which ensures that every gamer understands the responsibility that comes with becoming a Bully Hunter. In this example, she decided to accept the code of conduct and was immediately given a new identity, Bully Hunter 77. At this point, Bully Hunters can officially be called upon at any time. All Bully Hunter 77 did was add the Rose Thorn on Steam and then accept her invite to join the game. Once the hunt is complete, a Bully Hunter can verify whether the hunt was completed and whether the request was valid. This ensures that people don't take advantage of this powerful Bully Hunter tool. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us now, this is the first Bully Hunters Live. This is a big issue. To tell us more, we have two guests here. Kevin Lanham, 
and Dr. Alexandra Solomon. Kevin Lanham is a, li a licensed clinical professional counselor who specializes in working with gamers. He's a graduate of Northwestern University and has a thriving clinical practice in Chicago. And Dr. Alexandra Solomon is a professor in the Department of Psychology at Northwestern University, a licensed clinical psychologist at the Family Institute at Northwestern Universe University, and the author of Loving Bravely, 20 Lessons of Self-Discovery to Help You Get the Love You Want. Thank you both for joining us here at this live event. Um, real quick, um, as they're giving us more insight about this issue, we invite every one of you watching online to comment below with questions you might have. So, Mr. Lanham and Dr. Solomon, tell us about the issue and what impact it could have on women. Well, first, Natalie, thank you so much for having Dr. Solomon yeah, of and me here. I mean, this is an important issue, and all gamers know about this, but so many people who don't game have no idea. It's the targeted, re repeated bullying of female gamers. It creates an, a hostile online environment for women where they don't want a game, they're discouraged from, being, uh, from becoming gamers, and most importantly, it has an impact on them offline. The thing is that gamers put so much into their online community. They invest their time, their energy, and even though the game is, is virtual, the interactions are totally real. You're talking with a real person. Um, and just like uh, your real life interactions, when they're positive, when they help you uh, gain confidence, um, you take that with you offline. But when you're subjected to harassment, um, to abusive language, you feel insecure, you lose confidence, and you take that with you into your other relationships as well. And that's why we're trying to end this today. Yeah, and the thing we know, uh, whether it's online or face-to-face -face sexual harassment, is the impact on the person who's being harassed is that sense of diminishment, feeling less than, and that flood of shame and fear and terror, quite frankly. And so what we're doing tonight, what this initiative is all about, is figuring out how can we work together, men and women both, working together to move from a culture of harassment to a culture of inclusion, where really the intention of being in a gaming world is that, like, sort of the thrill of competition and that um, experience of mastery and getting better than you were the day before and creating a community. And so we really need to um, bring this from the shadows into the center of the room and really call it what it is and figure out how do we work together uh, to move from a culture of harassment to a culture of inclusion. It's really interesting. I, I love hearing you guys talk about it. It's amazing. Um, what, guys, what can you guys tell us about why sexism and harassment persists in the gaming world? Well, harassment happens everywhere, and right now more and more women are actually coming forward, which is a huge change. Um, but there are some things that make the online environment different. First, gamers keep their identity hidden. Right? People say and do things online that they only think about in real life. And for that reason, they actually don't feel the consequence of their words or of their actions. Right? Um, also, you don't get feedback from the person that you're harassing. If I were to say something horrible to you, I would see your face and I would feel terrible, right? Empathy is more difficult online for that reason. You know, second, women are often viewed as sexual objects online. I mean, games are really catering towards men's fantasies of being dominant, in control, and, and it's not really taking in the female perspective. And when the game is really playing up these ideas, it also flows into the communication between gamers and these female gamers. Mm -hmm. And building off that, you know, none of this happens in a bubble, right? So we, we live and have lived for thousands of years in a patriarchal culture, which means we've had spaces that have been able to be male-dominated spaces where men have set the terms and created the community. And that's what the online gaming world has been. And so what you see with the movement and the bringing in of female gamers is the same kind of pushback that other um, communities have experienced. You know, you think about politics or sports or the fields of science and math. Those female trailblazers have faced that pushback. And what we're seeing is 
is just the online manifestation of what happens when you take something old and transform it into something new. And that's what's happening now is there's a, um, a sea change that really ultimately benefits everybody. We know that when there's more diversity in our lives, when we have community with people who are different from us in terms of age, gender, sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, all of that diversity brings with it different kinds of skill sets, um, strategic approaches. There's benefits and wisdom from all of those differences. And the problem is in a patriarchy, it ends up feeling like this. Like if I give up my power, if I open up my space, I lose something. But the neat thing is inclusion is not pie, right? There's not, it's not like more for you means less for me. It's not how it works. So do you think this is a big reason why men act out towards women? I do. I mean, when you think, you know, the, the research on sort of what we do as a culture around how we raise our boys, the messages start very early and they're very powerful. By age three, parents are touching their boys less, making less eye contact with them, and really training and indoctrinating them that tender feelings, that emotion, that empathy equals weakness. So I think about my daughter came home from school uh, as a second grader, and in gym class, she had scored a goal, and uh, the goalie was a boy, and she heard a teammate say to the boy, dude, you just got scored on by a girl. And she came home and told me the story and she was confused. Like she knew something didn't feel right. She was sort of the butt of a joke of some kind, but in her mind it didn't add up. Like she was an athlete, she knew her stuff, she scored. And so it was kind of that early lesson and really powerful for me as a mom to see that by age seven, boys are taught to fear losing and they're taught especially to fear losing to a girl. And so when that's been the, the conditioning again and again and again of don't be like a girl, don't cry, don't show weakness, it's no surprise that the response to balance that out is rage, intimidation, and misuse of power. As we understand this is having a, an impact on women in multiple ways, including outside of gaming. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I think it really fits with this cultural moment that we're in with the Me Too movement and uh, the Time's Up movement, that they're really, we are at this really important moment of time, really a sea change, where we're saying that where women, victims, marginalized communities of all kind are saying no more. No more suffering in silence. No more buying the story that I have to be isolated, silent, ashamed of myself. And so as victims and marginalized communities come forward and say, this is the truth, this is my experience, it invites those with power here, men, to partner, to become allies, to become advocates, to really show powerful leadership, which is calling other men forward and saying, we can do this better, we have to do this better. Yeah. Mr. Lanham, how do you think men, like male gamers, can get involved in ending this kind of behavior? Well, clearly it is great seeing these elite female gamers come together today. Like, they are awesome, right? But I think men also have an opportunity to step up in this change. Um, you know, part of what Dr. Solomon was saying was, you know, these very traditional ideas of, like, how men can show up. And really, I think we need to redefine that, right? It's not just one way. And um, also, you know, when we're in this movement, we want to invite men into this process, right? Not all men are, are the harassers, right? There's men that stay silent, men that join in, and really it takes men ch challenging and calling out other men when they're seeing harassment. Like, hey dude, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? Um, uh, one of the things that is, uh, you know, I think, what a lot of guys are, are like really worried about are people telling them what to say. And this isn't about being word police or keeping everything PC. It's like challenging your ideas of like, why would you want to hurt other people? Why would you want to create this environment where women don't want to be here? Actually, there's a lot more back and forth that can happen when we're all gaming together. Yeah. And the research is clear that these kinds of traditional toxic masculinity hurts men. So there's a study of 20,000 men that found that the degree to which men, the more men subscribed to those traditional notions of I have to win at all costs, I have to treat women as sexual objects, the more they endorse those beliefs, the worse their mental health was. So this, it becomes this vicious cycle mm -hmm. where the more this is the behavior, the worse it becomes for the self and the self becomes depressed and anxious and isolated. And so it, it, it's as bad for the bully, well, maybe not as bad, but it's... There's, there's impact on the bully as well as on the victim. I definitely can see that a lot of people who do this kind of harassment may have their own issues to mm -hmm. deal with that they aren't you know, letting out in a healthy way. And deserve to have care around those issues, yeah. deserve to address those issues directly rather than it coming out sideways in this kind of behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it takes real strength to be able to 
take a different stance. Like when you poke your head out, I mean, like you've been doing, like that's that's when the hammers come, right? But the thing there's the, there's different ways to relate besides just hammer and nail. Like men can show a lot of power by taking responsibility for their actions, right? For actually caring for other people by trying to protect rather rather. Than, than harming. Like, there's actually a lot of opportunity for men to take a different stance online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's take our last question from our Facebook audience. Tian? Uh, yes, we have a great comment here. Kate asks, there's a ton of trash talking in gaming. How can we tell the difference between trash talking and harassment? Mm, that is a great question. I think the heart of it is that trash talk is really about like the thrill of the game. The trash talk is about I'm elevating myself and improving my game, but not at the expense of you. So it's bringing myself up without, conversely, putting you down. So that's one of the elements of it. Oh, Mr. Lane, I'm Dr. Solomon. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but there is something we need to show the audience right now. Uh, in just a second here, the lights have come down, and that is a signal for a bully hunt. Now let's see exactly how a bully hunt works. This is our casual gamer. Pink Light 23, who has been harassed in game. That's her, but let's cut to her feed. So we can see right now that we're in Pink Light 23's game. She's doing what she loves, playing CSGO. You wanna get raped, bitch? I know where you live. I can't handle how big her tits are. You want me to rape you? Now, that's exactly the toxic behavior we're fighting against here. Now, let's see how she used our global tool to call a bully hunter. Play that, please. So, Pink Light 23 is in game. What she's going to do is call a bully hunter with our tool. She's doing it right now. She just logged onto our site, and logged in with her Steam account, and is now locating a bully hunter. Now, let's see which bully hunter was called. So Pink Light 23 called the Bully Hunter. Now let's go back to her game and see how that plays out. Cut to that, please. Now we have Pink Light 23's game here, and if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, Bully Hunter 03 has entered the game. Bully, now Bully Hunter 03 is in, and she's going to ask our Pink Light 23 to name the harasser. There it is. And now we know the harasser and the hunt is on. Now let's see it from Bully Hunter 03 perspective. Cut to that, please. Now we're following Bully Hunter 03 as she pursues the bully. That's Pink Light 23 over there in the game. And Bully Hunter 03 is moving fast. Oh, and there's a kill and a double kill done excellently. And now we have the calling card here for Bully Hunters in the bottom corner. Bully Hunter harassment is not a game. Now, if you're just joining us, this is the first Bully Hunters Live. We've just seen a bully hunt, and we're going to take a minute to talk to our casual gamer, Pink Light 23, about her experience. Now, follow me. Sorry to interrupt you there. Um, what's your name? My name is Gretchen. Gretchen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, now, it was very hard to watch that harassment. As a female gamer, do you experience a lot of in-game harassment? Oh, absolutely. A and what kind of forms does that take? Um, anywhere from in-game trash talk, which can be normal, but sometimes it gets pretty sexual and sounds pretty dangerous when they start threatening you and then the DMs start coming. So that starts getting pretty scary. Right, so that sort of like violent language that's being used, how, do, how does that affect you as a gamer? Um, sometimes in game, when it's trash talk, it's not a big deal, but when it starts feeling more personal, getting into DMs and you start getting threats, like they're going to come find you or they know where you are, some of that stuff is trash talk, but it gets pretty scary when they start harassing you nonstop and those DMs won't stop coming. Right, and do you feel like that kind of um, dissuades you from continuing to play? There are times where it gets pretty tough yeah. and you just want to take a break. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. It's very brave of you to be here today. Um, back to you, Natalie. All right, well, thank you for your patience. If you've just tuned in, we're talking to Kevin Lanham and Dr. Alexandra Solomon. You were talking about harassment in gaming, and you're about to answer one of our Facebook comments. It was about how to differentiate trash talk from harassment. 
Yeah, well, the first point I was thinking about is um, it's about the intention. So the intention of um, Trash Talk is really just kind of elevating my play, but not at the expense of you. So the intention is to kind of bring myself more intentionally into the game, be more competitive, like bring my edge up, but not at the expense of bringing you down, uh, where the intention of harassment really is to kind of make the other person, the person at the receiving end of it, feel diminished, feel less than, and I feel more powerful at your expense. So that's one distinction. Another distinction I think is helpful is sort of a being versus doing distinction. So trash talk is about doing. It's about me talking about my play and my skill versus your skill. It's a doing versus harassment is about being. If I'm talking about your sex, sexual orientation, gender, race, all of that, it's really about who you are as a person and, and diminishing you as a person. And you can't, there's nothing we can change about who we are. We can sort of use the competitive um, environment to sort of push ourselves forward, but harassment really makes the person on the receiving end feel less than and inferior. And the problem, as Kevin was saying earlier about the online community, is you don't have that feedback loop the way that you would when you were playing side by side. And I could cue to you, like, dude, like that was a bit too much, like tone it down, which is why what's happening tonight is so important. It's we're providing that feedback loop in the, in the online world. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Do uh, Mr. Lanham and Dr. Solomon, I really appreciate it. And uh, now back to Tian. Thanks. As of now, our new global tool works on CSGO, which is used by 25 million gamers. CSGO is just a start with this tool. But for gamers experiencing harassment in any game, there's a Bully Hunter field guide. Now, this will help every gamer fight against sexual harassment in gaming. And you will find a field guide with every special edition headset. You can also download it at bullyhunters.org. Now, let's see what it looks like inside. Now, in this field guide, you will understand the difference between trash talk and harassment, and you'll learn how to deal with it. Natalie? All right. Now we have with us Paloma Delgadio of the National Organization for Women, or NOW. Paloma, please join me. This is the field guide, by the way. It's pretty cool. It's got a lot of interesting stuff in here. Hi, Paloma. Hi. So, while you get settled here, I just want to ask you, this initiative resonates with a lot of other larger cultural movements um, happening around the world right now. So can you tell us a little bit more about those and why this might be important for them? Absolutely. First of all, we need to acknowledge the fact that none of us exist in a bubble. We're a part of and affected by cultural movements, even if we're not specifically a part of that group. In this case, we want to create a cultural movement that tells women that the harassment they face online and offline is completely unacceptable. As activists, and more importantly, as people who just care about half of the population, it's extremely important that we make sure women feel validated and that they're important and that they don't deserve this. It's also extremely important that we let men know and would-be harassers know that this sort of behavior is completely unacceptable. I feel like sometimes we place a little bit too much emphasis on the victim to stave off harassment as opposed to the aggressors. Bottom line is that it is on the aggressors, on the people initiating that harassment to choose respect over hostility and that's the way these things get solved yeah that's true so what you're saying is that you know harassment in gaming affects women outside of gaming as well definitely so the thing is is that again none of us exist in a bubble right even if you're not a gamer think about it this way there are still spaces that exist in which harassment is not just accepted, it's the norm. This is what women have to go through all the time. I find it extremely disturbing that this is the sort of behavior that people expect all the time when they log into their computers. And the bottom line is that we're not gonna have full equality until women are treated equally in their professional lives, their personal lives, and their online lives. Yeah. And it's not about any special treatment, it's just about being treated equally. That's all we're asking for. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Paloma. We really appreciate it. And that's right, guys, this is a really important message and anyone can show support by sharing the campaign, changing their profile picture, 
getting the message out there that harassment in gaming is just not okay. And the more we can raise for the awareness of the problem, the larger impact we can have. Now, it's been an amazing day today, and we've launched our global tool, which fought bullies and in-game harassment. Here are some bully hunt highlights from today. Cue highlights, please. Bitch, I know where you live. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to rape you. You stupid gamer whore bitch. Before we wrap up, let's see uh, what people were saying on harassment of all kinds in the future. Okay, and we have another one here. Okay, now, uh, aren't you just bullying the bullies? Now, no, bully hunters aren't bullying the bullies. We'll not incite or encourage additional harassment or abuse. The bully hunters will only engage with other harassers through gameplay and will eliminate them from the game using their skills and talent, not harassment. Now, we've done so much today, but the fight isn't over. Yeah. Please go to bullyhunters.org, use our global tool, become a hunter, call a hunter, show your support sharing our, by sharing your message. You know, just stand up for what's right here. Together, we can really make an impact and end in-game harassment. So, thank, thank you, you for, for watching. watching. <laughs>